What is i? Mathematicians use i to represent the square root of negative 1. But what is the square root of a number? And how do we think the square root of a negative number? Before we talk about the square root of a negative number, let's consider the square root of a positive number, say the number 4. The name square root suggests to us that we need to consider a square. In particular, the number 4 tells us that this square has an area of 4. The square root is therefore the length of the square that produces a square of area 4. In this case, the side length of the square is 2, and since sides of a square are equal in length, even the vertical side has a length of 2. This means that we can write 4 as 2 times 2. Indeed, that is how we find the area of a square. Since the side of this square has length 2, we say that the square root of 4 equals the number 2. Let's try another calculation considering the square root of the number 9. This means we need to find the length of a square whose area equals 9. In this case, the length of the square is 3 units long and its height equaling the base equals 3 units long as well. By considering the area of a square, we can write 9 equals 3 times 3. And since 3 is the length of the square that gives an area of 9, we say that the square root of 9 is 3. Some numbers are not as nice, such as the square root of 2. The square root of 2 is the length of the square whose area equals 2. Now this number is not going to be the nicest number in the world. After all, if we consider a square with side length 1, its area will only equal 1. But if we consider a square with side length 2, then its area is going to be 4, which is way too large. We only want a square with area 2. We can instead try a smaller square whose side length is 1.5. This square has an area of 2.25, which is still too large. So we can try a smaller square instead, and the area of this smaller square is approximately 1.562. Now this square is too small so we need to consider a larger square. This new square has area 1.891, which is still too small. Now the next square has area 2.066, which is now way too large. We can keep on doing this until we obtain a square with an approximate area of 2. And if you actually check it out on your calculator, you don't actually get 2 exactly. However, when we round off the numbers, we obtain an approximate area of 2. This means that we can write 2 approximately as 1.414 times 1.414. Since the base of this square is approximately 1.414, the square root of 2 is approximately 1.414 as well. This is an approximation, and we call the square root of 2 an irrational number. But none of this adequately explains what it means to take the square root of negative 1. How can we obtain a square with area negative 1? One possible approach to this is by considering signed areas of squares. This particular square has base 1 and height 1. Therefore, its area equals just 1. There's nothing really fancy at this point in time. But if we were to flip the height of this square, we're going to flip the area of the square as well. In this case, the signed area of this square, since its base is 1 and its height is negative 1, it has an area of negative 1. Likewise, if we flipped both the height and the base, we will flip this square two times, 
which gives us two sign changes. Since the base of the square is negative of 1, and the height of this square is positive of 1, this square has a signed area of negative 1. Finally, if we were to flip the height one more time, we will flip the square to obtain a positive area of area 1. This is one way to interpret the counterintuitive notion that negative of 1 times negative of 1 equals 1. So we see different ways to obtain the area of a square. However, the two methods of obtaining a negative area have different bases and heights, in the sense that they have different signs. But on the other hand, if we were to consider equal side lengths, we only get a positive area. So is there really no way to obtain the square root of negative 1? Now these calculations can be interpreted in a slightly different manner. The square root of negative 1 is the number that when multiplied by itself gives the number negative of 1. Let's interpret the first equation in a slightly different way. Start with an arrow pointing to the number 1. Since the first number is 1, we make no changes to this arrow. Since the second number is 1, we make no changes to the arrow once again. The point at which the arrow points to is the result of the multiplication. This means that 1 times 1 equals 1. That equation isn't so surprising, so let's think about the second equation. The first number is 1, so we are not going to flip the arrow in any way. But the second number is the negative of 1. This warrants a 180 degree rotation. The landing spot is negative of 1. This tells us that 1 times the negative of 1 equals the negative of 1. For the third equation, since the first number is the negative of 1, we first perform a rotation. And since the second number is 1, we will not make any changes to the arrow. Since the landing point is negative of 1, the negative of 1 times 1 equals the negative of 1. For the final equation, since the first number is the negative of 1, we first perform a 180 degree rotation. Since the second number is the negative of 1, we perform yet another 180 degree rotation. And since the landing spot is the number 1, the negative of 1 times the negative of 1 equals 1. This now raises a question. Is there a way to rotate the arrow so that rotating it 2 times lands us at negative of 1? You might notice that if we rotate this by 90 degrees, and we called it I, then rotating it 90 degrees a second time lands us at negative of 1. Let's check to see that this is really true. Since the first number is I, we rotate by 90 degrees. Since the second number is I, we rotate by 90 degrees again. Since the landing spot is the negative of 1, we really have i times i equals the negative of 1. In other words, a 90 degree rotation represents the square root of negative of 1, which is encoded by the letter i. To learn more about i, check out the video here.